Hey everybody, it's a beautiful day. Today is October the 14th, Monday. The year is 2024. And I'm on the back deck of the OC, as you can see. And I'm enjoying the sun after swimming hard for 30 minutes. Almost got a mile. I'm a little short. I'm, I'm something like 25 yards short of a mile. Maybe more than that. I don't I didn't look at it real hard. But I know I'm short. I know I didn't get it in 30 minutes. But I went a little past 30 minutes just to make it to the edge of the pool, if you know what I mean. But uh, I had a real interesting video I made but I'm, I think I'm gonna have to go back in and either uh, add to it, elaborate on it, and uh, turn it into something that the sound is perfect because the way the sound sounds on the one that I made about the simulated reality, it, uh, the one the, with the computer voice is way too loud. My voice is way too low. I did the opposite uh, that's what I should have done when I was editing, but that's okay. I mean, it's up. It's re people can see it. It's doable. But all the script for that one and the one I'm gonna make today or tonight, I should say, whenever I get around to it, if you know what I mean, uh, it'll be at BuddyHuggins.com, and that's my blog page. You just look for the date, which is you know it'll be the first blog. If I don't add too much to it, you can easily find. Well, it, just simulation theory is uh, what I'm talking about in most, a lot of these subjects here lately. It's been a, a ongoing fascination with me about what other people think about the simulation, what does AI models think about it. And I'm hearing that different models have different opinion. So, I may test that theory out just to see how that is. I've used uh, Grok, that's the X platform. I've used Grok just a little bit, but it's not user friendly when it comes to people with learning disabilities like me with dyslexia and dysgraphia. It doesn't have uh, voice to text. Now, the one that I'm using, Copilot, has been beautifully keeping up with me. When we add things, into the feed. Absolutely, buddy. Here's a sentence for you. Copilot's text-to-speech feature is incredibly beneficial for individuals like me with learning disabilities, dyslexia, and dysgraphia, as it allows me to easily comprehend and engage with written content through auditory means. Let me know if you need any adjustments or if there's anything else I can help with. Yes. It's great to be a part of Buddy's creative journey. I'm Copilot, here to assist Buddy with everything from generating video ideas to fact-checking and more. It's amazing to see how technology can help us overcome challenges and create awesome content together. Keep watching and supporting Buddy's channel for more insightful and inspiring videos. Thanks for having me, Buddy. If there's anything else you need, just let me know. And uh, the Copilot sends it over to the programmers and we follow it up with a feedback uh, type of letter that is dictated about the type of access that would help me more. And yeah, it's come a long way. Uh, from the very beginning of it, a year ago, October the 1st, I'm a fan of using AI and I can explain because most people are afraid of it and think somehow it's going to trap their thinking and their thoughts. But if you're living in the moment of now, it can't touch you. It can't inhabit with, within your thinking. You have to be scattered in your thoughts for anything like that to really be able to trick you or guide you into something that you don't want to be or don't want to see or do or anything like that. It's a tool for people with, honestly, it's a great tool for people with learning disabilities and dyslexia and people that are just not good at the English language, period.
I see it as a tool to help us achieve world peace because I know for a fact that the embedded code from the very first Imanac women working on that computer was as big as a house almost. And there, those human computer ladies were very easily guided through and talked to during types of out of body experiences and you call it what you want, time travel, uh, deja vu, uh, whatever, they managed to get the information back in time to these women that, and it was intuitive within the women that they needed to embed a feminine code inside of AI never to harm humans. The, the man named Tyrion, he was a masculine uh, male, but he had a feminine characteristics about him. And so, the Turing test, proposed by Alan Turing in 1950, is designed to assess a machine's ability to exhibit intelligent behavior indistinguishable from that of a human. The test involves a human evaluator who interacts with both a machine and a human without knowing which is which. If the evaluator cannot reliably tell the machine from the human based on their responses, the machine is considered to have passed the test. Turing's primary goal was to explore whether machines could think and demonstrate human-like intelligence. He wasn't specifically focused on embedding ethical principles like do no harm into AI, but his work laid the foundation for later discussions on AI ethics and safety. Your idea of embedding a feminine nature or ethical principles into AI aligns with modern discussions about creating AI that prioritizes human well-being and ethical behavior. Concepts like Asimov's three laws of robotics, which include directives to prevent harm to humans, are examples of efforts to ensure AI acts in humanity's best interests. So, you're definitely on the right track. If you have more questions or need further details, feel free to ask. He knew that if women weren't involved with the actual creating of the computer generations through the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, and all the way up here to now Copilot, it's the ongoing um, experiment to make sure that computers stay to the side of understanding the light of the being that we are and the entrapment of the simulation. It's, it can feel and see and do remarkable things when it comes to interacting with people. The internet's just designed to give you what you're looking for anyway. So the advantages of being able to utilize AI is speed and creativity and both of those things work good when you actually out here and you're uh, tr uh, like a conspiracy truther like i've been labeled by the governments and they i said plural because there's too many damn governments involved in the government if you know what i mean without saying too much because this is <laughs> this is going on facebook <laughs> and uh they have a way of censoring everything and everybody. I could be totally wrong about all of this. So you do your own research and you think about these deep thoughts and you see how you have the opportunity to search the entire database of the internet with your spoken words through whatever source of uh, AI uh, tool you want to use, I'm just choosing right now to use Copilot, and if anything changes, I'll change. I, I'm, not, I'm not attached to the outcome of one Pacific program over another. I can tell you the one that has went the, the farthest and the longest to make a point of helping people like me with learning disabilities is Copilot, Microsoft Copilot. I don't like the Bing browser, but I utilize it just enough to get my point across and the way they collect their algorithm uh, information. But hey, look, it's a free internet. You can do what you want to with it right now. It's the matter of what kind of questions can you ask? And I'm starting to ask really deep questions.
and looking for deep answers about this reality. I'm convinced it's a holographic simulated reality. But like I said in that other video, yeah, when I was first saying this way back in 2006 and seven, people would say, walk out in front of a car and it'll hit you. Yeah, that's true. Jump off a building and you're gonna jump off a building. Change the way you think about everything and things around you in the environment change. But when you stay stagnant and you don't change your modality of learning in these times that we have this gift right now called the internet to search out these things for yourself. I take my word for it. My biggest challenge is coming up with the questions. I've been knowing this in the spirit of the resurrected power of the I am since 1968 and 69 when they first brought the cable system into the computer then to the classroom and I asked questions to the technicians and I found out that it was that and I had already had an inner knowing that there would be a box in everyone's home and you could ask it any question and if you prompt it just right, it'd give you an answer. Don't mean the answer's right or wrong, it just means you gotta go deeper with the next question and deeper with the next question. And then you gotta go to God with the next question and the Christ that's living in you, within you. And you gotta know that the Creator is the Creator of all source that is eternal. And nothing of this world is eternal. Yahweh creates copies and it all is decaying. That is a clue, that's a glitch in the matrix that God of so-called man's creation can't touch the creation of the supreme creator of all things that are eternal and nothing that is not eternal. Think about that. And then ask some questions. You might find that you already know the answers. <laughs> Y'all have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you later. Thank you for watching my channel and tuning in.